The exper- experience did not meet expectations. All right. Uh, well, I had an interesting conversation with the patrons. You can, uh, since you're a patron, I presume you can go back and and uh, check out what we talked about. Well, not only am I a patron, I am also a. Uh, hey, know, hey! The, don't confuse this this diatribe of mine with facts. The, the, the producer of the show. <clears throat> uh, da, 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 da. Details. <laughs> All right, man, I am ready whenever you are ready, and a lot of that will probably get cut out if it's not good. So hopefully you talked really well while I was gone, and ready when you are for me to hit the record button. Just let me know. <clears throat> okay. Um, me, me, me. Um, okay. Uh, go ahead and hit that button. Five, four, three, two, one. On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent... Restored a table? Uh, Amos organized some Gloomhaven, or tried to. It, Kent ordered a guitar on the internet? What? A, a, a guitar? Like... <laughs> more like... <laughs> oh, okay. And we'll give you your, uh, your weekly kind of sad as hell COVID update? Sounds good. All right, let's go. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 245 for Thursday, the 26th of March, 2020. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent. We don't matter because you matter to us. Stay home, wash your damn thumbs. Yes, yes, wash your damn thumbs. <laughs> um, what's going on, man? Oh. A week has passed and, and we're back on the show. It's like, this is two weeks in a row. What is this? I know. Uh. <laughs> It's unprecedented times we live in. <laughs> the entire rest of the world is trying to learn how to stream online, and we're like, "Oh my gosh!" Like this is happening again. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's been interesting. Been watching a lot of news, things like that. But uh, life is as usual for the most part. Uh, watching the kids go to virtual online school, which is a treat for my seven year old. That's that's great that they actually are able to do that. Uh, the, the local school system here has not implemented anything like that. So, it, 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 mm. so uh, my daughter posted a Facebook thing today. She's and it said, uh, people who continue to walk around and ignore the stay at home policy are the same ones that would hide a zombie bite. I'm taking notes, people. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah that, that, yeah, that's, that's legitimate. <laughs> You know, it's every zombie TV show or movie has that guy. Yeah, it, it gets bit and tries to hide it. Yeah, we we are that nation. Um, Hell, even Game of Thrones had had that when uh, Jorah, Jorah hid the fact that he was bitten by, or um, at least touched by the Stone Man. The Stone Man, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, real quick, since we're since we're talking about, it, let me uh, let me pull up the COVID update. You know, we have now surpassed the reported. I say reported cases in China. Mm-hmm. Uh, because right. there is some doubt on whether or not they actually provided real numbers. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's like it's like we we talked about before as well. Like our numbers aren't accurate either. So even if the reporting is accurate, those are only confirmed cases. So right. whatever the number is, you can probably triple or quadruple that, and you're you're closer. Right. Worldwide, we're at five hundred and thirty-one thousand. That's over half a million people uh, have been confirmed to have this COVID. Yep. Um, and the U.S. is now number one. We, we were just above China. Now we're at 85,505, which is 4,000 above China. And Italy is almost cut up to China's reported numbers. So it's not good, people. It's not good. Yep. We will we will survive, um, most of us. Um, uh, well, I mean... We, we will get through this as a society. Our society will be changed by this event. <laughs> Uh, but hopefully it's for the better. I, I, yeah. I'm confident it will be for the better in the long term. Uh, because I'm the the jerk that I am, uh, I immediately started chanting USA, USA, USA upstairs. And I was like, we're number one. We're number one. And my, my yeah. sister-in-law was like, in what? And I was like, in uh, confirmed COVID cases. She's like, really? That's something to chant? And I was like, you're right. We're only number six in deaths worldwide. We've got room to grow. Good Lord. Yeah, <laughs> uh, unfortunately... 
Um, I mean, we got to maintain our senses of, of humor about this because yeah. otherwise, like, it's just a you know dark place spiral. Right, and, um, that, and that's exactly what what the whole thing was. Is like you know we even politically and all the, all the other things going on right now. If I don't find something, some way to see this as as funny, it's just too dark and too uh, nihilistic for even me. And I'm I'm already a nihilist. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I've I've actually been enjoying my time off in this uh, this uh, quarantine situation that I'm that I'm under right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was telling the the patrons in the pre-show about um, getting enough sleep for one. The cheese table that I ate at uh, as a little baby. Oh, Kent. Um, oh, and oh, it's Kent, been Kent. Kent. Yeah. You know yeah, how yeah. we had really great audio coming into the episode, and then I joked that my internet would probably drop out. <laughs> your Skype just dropped out. Oh no! And I, and I say it was your Skype because I haven't missed any frames. No frames have, have missed uploading. So it. So tell us again about uh, about what you've been doing on your vacation. <laughs> on your right. corn corncation. <laughs> yeah, my quarantation, uh, my coronation. Uh, uh, so I've been getting a lot of sleep, mm-hmm. um, adequate sleep. Let's just say that I've, I've been getting right about eight hours of sleep a night, which has been absolutely freaking wonderful. Um, but beyond that, I've been able to accomplish a lot of things around the house that I've been meaning to get to uh, just, you know, general cleaning and chores and yard work and things like that. But also a lot of organizing and taking care of little projects around the house. And I was able to accomplish something that has been on my to do list for a couple of years now. I have the kitchen table that belonged to my parents when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's the table that I ate at as a baby. And it's showing its age. This it's thing a, is like fifty years old. It's a it's a round wooden table. Yeah, like it's it's yeah. a fairly basic table, but it's one of those tables that you look at and you're like, that's going to last literally forever. Right. Well, the complicated thing about it is that it, it's one of those tables that that expands, and you can add a leaf or two leaves uh, to it so that it's it can be a perfectly round fairly small table like enough for like four people to sit around or you can expand it out to uh, uh probably like another three feet yeah in it, length. It, it goes from card table to dining table in about right. six minutes yeah yeah pretty much and um so and that includes the five minutes it takes to find the leaves because you know you don't know where the hell those things are. That's exactly what takes the most time. <laughs> because when you take those things out, you got to stash those in a closet or in, in the garage underneath some other stuff. Or, you know. <laughs> and they're never um, small. Have you ever seen a leaf for a table that was small? No. They've always, no. They're always like, a, it's a flat table surface. And then the sides always have like these big buckle things. And there's, there's usually like some brackets or some, something underneath it to, you know, it's, oh man. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so uh, real quick, I want to give a shout out to TS, TSCN Sam uh, with the raid. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, incoming Chapa raid. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, so, yeah, so I've been meaning to fix this table for several years now, actually. I said a couple. It's more like uh, probably three or four years because it's getting old. It's getting wobbly. Like it's kind of falling apart. Um, so I was able to do that over the last week. Uh, I, I took it apart. I had to uh, find a two by four in my garage to fashion some some uh, new parts for it. And um, yeah, so I like completely restored this table and it is sturdy as a rock now. And uh, it's a great table again. And I'm, I'm really, really happy about that. I, have you been able to... Um, to uh, catch up on any any projects lately? I've been just trying to catch up on work because I took that two-week vacation and decided that I wasn't going to touch anything or any kind of projects or anything. So I finally got caught up on Ritual Misery again. I'm getting caught up on Talking Feds. Uh, I still got some IQMZ to get caught up on. Uh, and basically just doing that, I have spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, working with uh, my photography and kind of organizing that and, and 
culling out some of the out of focus and blurry shots, things like that. So trying to trim that down. Um, mm. But creatively, I haven't really been working on much of anything like with my hands. However, he says as he reaches behind him. I told you all last week about this Gloomhaven game. Oh, yes, yes. And I finally peeled the cardboard apart. And there's a lot. It's... Oh, yeah. It's several hundred pieces. And as I pulled it apart to play last weekend, I was like, there's no way I'm going to keep track of all this in baggies or whatever. There's got to be a better... So I looked online, like, how do other people organize their Gloomhaven? And I found out there's cases, there's like little trays that you can put in here Mm. that fit in the original box and keep everything organized. I mean, they don't exactly fit. Most of them don't exactly fit. The the one that I got uh, comes up about a quarter to half an inch higher than the normal, but... Um, it, it comes to you like this. Oh yeah, so uh, perforated, perforated sheets. Yeah, but they're yeah, they're I wouldn't call them perforated. They're I don't know, I don't even know. They're like laser or solid or something. They're each of the pieces that you'd normally pull off are attached to exactly two spots. So it's fairly easy to pull them out. And you pull them out and then you stick them all together with wood glue and then you have all this this big tray system. And that's kind of what I've been working on. I started pulling everything apart and looking at it and all that stuff um, today because it came in the mail today. And uh, haven't I, I, as soon as I realized I needed glue, I was like, ah, I should wait until after the show for this. And then I went upstairs and made dinner. So <laughs> there's my night. Right on. Well, that's that sounds like a, a kind of a busy work kind of uh, thing to do, but also kind of kind of fun because it it, it gets you to uh, being able to enjoy that game. Yeah, it's a uh, I consider it a, a puzzle to put it all together because you have the instructions and stuff, but you still got to kind of finagle things. It's like a mm-hmm. puzzle that you end up with a working product instead of just something you can put on your wall until the glue falls apart and it falls off. <laughs> But yeah, that's uh. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to get that put together tonight uh, after the show, and then probably Saturday start playing that with the kids. Right on. Uh, so speaking of, of playing things, so over the last couple of months, uh, we've been playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, it was a weekly game. I say was uh, because social distancing has prevented us uh, from meeting like normal. Um, <clears throat> but I've, I've started to develop a new character and I've been working on my, my character a lot lately. Uh, I think I've mentioned it before, uh, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm developing a bard character. It's a halfling bard. And I wanted to kind of go the extra mile creatively with this character. And cause one of my favorite things about playing Dungeons and Dragons and, and other RPGs is the actual role playing aspect of it. Right. You know, so I try to. Not necessarily every time uh, come up with a voice for the character, but speech patterns and and like certain vocabulary and things like that. I try to incorporate. Um, I try to when I'm speaking for the character, I try to be as much in character in game as possible. Right. And uh, <clears throat> have you ever played a bard before? I have, but I didn't play it very well. Uh, and it was a, it wasn't a musical bard. It was a, like I, I, I built her to be an orator. So oh, okay. she okay. would describe the battle as it was going on. And that's how I, I manifested that into the game because I'm not musically inclined for the most part. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, um, exactly what you'd call a, a talented musician myself. Um, however, <laughs> I'm trying to incorporate, um, uh, musicianship into my character. So one of the things that I did was I decided that, that when, when my character, his, his name is going to be Neville, uh, when Neville casts a spell, he is going to sing the spell and perform a little bit when he, when he casts it. <clears throat> so I'm not just going to say to the DM, uh, Hey, I'm, I'm going to cast, uh, you know, X, Y, Z. Right, right now, the uh, the spells are, are uh, not in my brain right now, and I don't have a sheet in front of me. But, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> but yeah, so instead of just telling the DM, hey, I'm going to cast a spell, I came up with little songs to play um, in the casting. So I, I came up with like – for each spell, I came up with two lines of lyrics uh, because a turn 
or a, an action is supposed to take six seconds. So I was like, all right, so I got to say this in six seconds just to be in the, you know, keep it in um, like game terms or whatever. Yeah. So I came up with, with two lines of lyrics for each spell and I ordered a guitar <laughs> as a prop. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to actually show this right now. <laughs> so, I mean, I've got guitars at the house, right? But I'm mm -hmm. not going to like break out a full size guitar and, and you know, get all crazy with it. Um, but I ordered this little thing right here that's actually advertised as a toy guitar. Um, mm. I paid like twelve dollars or something for this on Amazon. And uh, there, there'll be a link in the show notes to it if anybody's interested. Um, but it it does not tune well. Uh, it's very difficult to tune. This is sounding and amazing. It's, and it's got these like I don't know for the video uh, viewers here, so you can see that it's got the the tuning keys, but it's also got these little set screws in the tuning keys. Mm -hmm. So in order to to tune this guitar. You have to loosen the set screw and then tune the string. And then while holding the tuning screw, you have to tighten the set screw. So it is a fucking pain in the ass to tune it at all. Even then, it doesn't keep the tune for very long. I mean, you, you could probably <laughs> play like a song maybe before it's so out of tune that it's it, like you're going to have to do it again. So it's amazing. not so, yeah, so it's it's not like an instrument that you want to like actually play for people, but I think it's fantastic as a prop right. for for Dungeons and Dragons. Plus, I I mean, just from my own point of view, the worse it sounds, the better a prop it will be. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I'm going to before our next game session, I'm going to tune it again and then just like hope for the best because I'm just going to play like, you know, basic just a couple basic chords or whatever mm -hmm. that, but like, as you can, like, it's not in tune at all. And, uh, but anyway, for like 12 bucks, 13 bucks or something like that. That is amazing. Great, great buy. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait to, to debut my bard character because it's, it's gonna, it is going to surprise the shit out of the, the rest of the, the the party our our uh our fellow players are gonna be like what the fuck because just because of how much I'm bringing to the character it's gonna be a lot of fun it sounds awesome I'm down <clears throat> are you streaming that anywhere is that just homegrown like it's not oh going no out it's anywhere? no it's it's not going out anywhere I I thought about because I'm I'm putting a lot into the backstory of the character I was thinking about actually writing like a um. I don't know if you want to call it a novella, but like a short story mm -hmm. basically to explain his origin and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. And if I do, if I end up doing that, I might, I might publish that somewhere. But uh, as far as like streaming the game, that's, that's not a thing we've even talked about yet. <sighs> yeah. I, uh, I, you would think I'd be able to play more D and D since we're under this damn quarantine, but it's just not, it hasn't manifested yet. So, you know, yeah. what, you know what it does manifest, though? Our patrons uh, at patreon.com slash virtual misery. Oh, my gosh. Dude, the patrons are fantastic. So we recently paused the campaign. Yes. So the, the Patreon campaign is paused, so we are not charging any of our patrons. But we're still accepting patrons, and patrons still get all of the benefits of being a patron. So mm -hmm. not only do you get access to the treasure chest – uh, which if you can find that on, on uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery, you're going to find all sorts of amazing things from when Amos and I were, were uh, sweet summer children. <laughs> um, lots of, lots of really cool stuff. Plus every week you get the, the pre-show and the post-show mm -hmm. and there's some exclusive interviews in there, um, all kinds of stuff for the patrons and patrons are getting that for free. Uh, so jump in there while you can um, to, to experience all of this stuff, you get access to the entire back catalog on their, uh, patreon.com slash ritual misery. Definitely go check that out. Uh, as for now though, it is time for this. 
Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. This week's game is called Age of Arcadia. Any idea what this uh, <clears throat> this game is about? I'm going to guess that it has something to do with um, how old certain games are and how long they've been around. You are pretty much right on the money here. So what I'm going to do is name two classic arcade titles, and you're going to tell me which one is older. Okay. So wh- which game released first? Ooh. So it's going to be kind of challenging because a lot of these were released very close to one another mm-hmm. on the timeline. Uh, some of them are, are spread out, but most of them are pretty close. So um, I'm going to be very impressed if you get the D on this one. Ooh. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Uh, as ready as you'll never be. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Your first two games, Pong and Breakout. Which one came out first, Pong or Breakout? Pong. That one was easy. Pong was about 78 and Breakout was probably 81 or so. Maybe Pong was actually Pong was actually 1971. Ooh. Yeah. And uh, Breakout, I don't have it right in front of me right now, but I think Breakout was like 78. It was like Mm. 77, 78. Okay. It was quite a bit uh, later than Pong. All right. Your next two games, Asteroids or Space Invaders? Which one came first? I'm going to say Space Invaders. So so far, so good, man. Yeah. The, the only reason I thought about that was because for Asteroids, they had to design and implement vector graphics, and it took them some time to develop that in order to make it smooth enough for the 30 frames a second screen. 30 fr- Wow. Okay. So I knew everything <laughs> that you'd said up to that point. 30 frames a second. Was yeah. the uh, okay twenty nine ninety seven? That's that's the N- NTSC timing. So go ahead, man. Look at you get it all nerdy. <clears throat> um, I yeah, mean, so if I'm not going to get the game right, I might as well throw some extra shit out there that I learned uh, last night on YouTube. <laughs> Space Invaders uh, came out in 1978. Uh, I think Asteroids was probably a year later. Um, okay, so your next two games: Galaxian hmm. or Pac Man. Which ooh. was released. I'm going to say, ooh, released first, though. Um, yes, Galaxian or Pac-Man? I'm, I'm going to go with Pac-Man on here just because I don't like Galaxian. <laughs> yeah, that's why I should have gone with Galaxian. Yeah, Galaxian came out in 79. I think Pac-Man was 81, 80 yeah. or 81. Um, yeah, I, see, I'm the exact opposite. I, I like Galaxian. Uh, don't really care for Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man, on the other hand, is fantastic. Uh, but the original Pac-Man, eh, I mean, for the time, it was great. Uh, but going back, like, replayability, yep. it, Ms. Pac-Man's where it's at. Speaking <laughs> <laughs> right. of re- replayability, I just picked up uh, the Mega, or the Capcom pack on Steam, and it comes Ooh. with, uh, it came with all the Mega Mans. Oh, my God. Like, when, all, all the original Mega Mans, all the Mega Man Xs, and all the Mega Man X2s. My my favorite Mega Man game was the original Mega Man X. Mm, that game yep. has my heart. I really like that one because I figured out the bubbles before they came out in Nintendo Power. <laughs> <laughs> now you're playing with power. Yeah. All right, your next two games. Defender or Galaga? Defender or Galaga? Which one was released first? Defender. Defender was released in 1980. Um, do you remember playing Defender? I remember by name only, but if you told me about it, I'd probably remember it. Yeah, so ba- Defender's basically, a, a if, if I remember right anyway, Defender's the, the side-scrolling uh, spaceship game where you got things like coming up, like shooting you from the ground and also like right, other ships right, right. like you have to shoot in front yeah. of you. 
Um, I, I liked that game because I would always imagine that it was something else. Like it was um, like it was the Millennium Falcon or something like that. And I was playing a Star Wars game um, or it was, um, you know, the Enterprise and I was playing a Star Trek game or something yeah. like that. Um, OK, so the next two games, Donkey Kong or Joust? Donkey Kong. What year do you think Donkey Kong was released? 81. Very good. Holy shit. That's uh that's right on. Yep, I think uh, I think Joust came the, the following year. Okay, next two games. It's, Pole position. I'm not even taking these as um like memory or anything else, because this is all way before I'd have an accurate memory of anything anyway. But I'm taking it on technology. Like it it'd be easier to code. Donkey Kong, where there's really no advanced physics involved, than it would Joust, where you had slide. Every time you landed, you slid a little bit. And, yeah, you know, unless you, you landed mo- st- like straight down. Right. Yeah. You had yeah you, you had momentum in uh, yep. uh, factors in it. So yeah. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good call. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, next two games: pole position or Frogger. Pole position, of course, being the racing game and Frogger being the uh, uh, predecessor to, to Crossy Road. <laughs> right. Um, that's a tough one. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with pole position. This sounds like an early... Ar- ah, damn it. <laughs> yeah, Frogger was 1981. Um, and again, I think pole, pole position, position was 1984. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um Frogger Frogger's not a bad game. I've I've logged some hours on on Frogger, but it's funny when you go back to like when you play Frogger like on a Atari twenty six hundred or something like that, Mm -hmm. looking at how archaic and simplistic the graphics is kind of like it's almost shocking at yeah. how simplistic it is. Frogger is one of the few games that has gotten better with every iteration or fork. Like Crossy or Road fork. is oh. way better than Frogger ever was. But then right, if you go right. through the evolution of just Frogger, it got better every single time. Better graphics, better gameplay, better timing, better controls, more complicated gameplay, um, mm. different artifacts. Like, yeah, yeah. Frogger is a special kind of game because it's so simple. It's easy to complexicate it. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, none of, none of the iterations have gotten like overly complicated. It's always right. been get across the road without getting smashed, or, or <laughs> yeah, get get across the thing without getting hit. Well, yeah. by the thing and, or landing on the thing. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving ahead a, a little bit into the future, a li- starting to come out of the golden age, Ninja Gaiden. Arcade now, uh, well, you're you're close ish. <laughs> The next two games are Double Dragon Ooh. and Tetris. Double Dragon. Double Dragon and Tetris. That was easy. Yeah, so Double Dragon came out in 1987. Tetris, I think, was uh, 89. 89? Sounds 89. right. Because it, it was initially released with the Game Boy. Yep. The first Game Boy. Yep, that's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's also uh, the first time we had headphones like this. The earbud headphones. Because I got my Game Boy from Charlie Fultz, who bought the Game Boy only for the headphones. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't. I still have that Game uh, Boy. <laughs> but that is that is a true story, though. <laughs> yeah, all, all that is true. And I, and it, I still have it, and it still works. That's amazing. All right, your next two games. Mortal Kombat mm. or Street Fighter 2? Mortal Kombat. Oh, see, I thought this would be an easy one. Yeah, Street Fighter 2 definitely came out uh, before Mortal Kombat. Uh, Street mm. Fighter 2 was released in 1991. Unfortunately, I only put the the correct answers release date. I didn't put the release date for the other one. Way to half-ass it. Yeah, kind of half-ass this one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Mortal, Mortal Kombat was a couple of years later because it was – so Street Fighter 2 is the game that that popularized fighting games. 
like Ed, every fighting game since has modeled itself after Street Fighter 2. And Mortal Kombat was the shocking, oh my God, uh, yeah. reaction from parents and politicians and teachers and whatnot about the the morality of video games and all of that kind of crap. Yep. Uh, okay. Next two. Two of my favorite arcade games of all time. Oh, shit. The Simpsons oh. and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Um, Ninja Turtles came out in 1989. Simpsons was a, a, like two, three years later. Yep. I think uh, the same basic concept of the game. So up to four players. Uh, it's basically a beat em up, a side scrolling beat em up game. Uh, with boss levels and all of that. Uh, but man, if I could have the money back that I dumped into The Simpsons and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like I could probably, mm, I, I could probably pay half my mortgage payment. <laughs> I, with inf- interest, hell yeah. Um, I, I preferred Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles over <clears throat> Simpsons. Same. Uh, there, there simply a... because I, I identify with the characters more, I think. Oh, well, I think. Because the Simpsons had a bunch of little cutscenes in it, someone would pop out of a window and and like their little bubble would come up and the game would pause for a minute and it used to just piss me off. Oh, get to the end, I end see. scene, there'd be like dialogue. Like I don't need dialogue. I just need to go find Shredder. Like, yeah, I mean, so there were cutscenes in TMNT, but it was always like after the like after you beat the boss, there'd yeah. be like you know fifteen. And they seconds. were they were short. Like they assumed that you had speed reading glasses on because they didn't care. They were moving on. The Simpson one was like kind of a, yeah, felt slow. So I never really, I always went to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles instead. Yeah. 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 If, if, if an arcade had both of them, yeah, I was going to team and T, but usually the arcades that I visited only had one or the other. Cause there's only two arcades in Indiana. <laughs> one that, that one might... was at the mall and had all the good games, but it cost twice as much as that little piece of shit down the street. That's right. Aladdin's Castle was the name of the one at the mall. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. So your final and, and uh, that place and the Cinnabon were the two places we would visit every single time we were at the mall, and we'd never spend any money in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd go there and see all the other people, and then you know playing games and stuff. I'd be like, okay, that was fun. And then I'd leave and go down to Cinnabon and smile for my free sample, and then move on with my day. Yep. Free sample. Just smile, and you would go up. Stand there, make a point to make yourself known, and then just smile like a fucking idiot. And it was great. It was great. Because the, the teenagers working the counter were like, what? 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 Oh, oh, you want a sample? Yeah. <laughs> like, they're so disappointed. Hey, there, there was one time that I got you, Pat, Jeremy, Jen, Alfie. There's like eight of us at the mall all at one time. And I got all of us to go up there and smile. And they were like, Here. Just cut this one up and don't come back. And I was like, "All right, the the train has ridden. The tr- you know yeah. has left the station." Well, it was probably like our third visit that day. That yeah, <laughs> so, that that afternoon, like it was <laughs> that shift. Yeah, there, there wasn't much else to do in Tippy Mall, so <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right, your final two games: Dance Dance Revolution <laughs> or Beat Mania. <laughs> I'm going to say, I want to say, okay, so before you buzz me on this one, I'm going to say Beat Mania because it's the one that I have heard less about, which means that DDR probably got the second mover advantage on every aspect of it. So I'm going to say Beat Mania. That is correct. Amos, you missed... Three out of the ten, which means with a score of 70%, you beat the D. I got the D plus <laughs> plus. You beat the D. Yay. <clears throat> and the more important part of that, there's only like one genuine guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this this quiz wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Or I watch more YouTube than I you than you assumed. <laughs> I think that's, that's uh, probably more accurate. <laughs> yeah, but there's uh, we're gonna have some some links in the show notes for the the quiz receipts, and uh, w- one of them is Wikipedia. You can skip that one. 
Uh, but click on the other one and just check it out. It's a it's a really really interesting read about the timeline of uh, video games and and stuff like that. Uh, there's actually quite a few. If you just if you just Google timeline of arcades or something like that, uh, lots and lots of interesting nerdy reading in there. Uh, really cool stuff. Very cool. Um, hey man, today's topic is gamers. It's the last of our six episode spree through the tagline of ritual misery which in case you need to remember be reminded is friends geeks veterans parents nerds gamers um so we're going to talk about some games and do some gaming stuff today kent why don't you start with legends ultimate what the what what are we talking about here oh my gosh so i if if you're watching us right now or listening to this podcast i highly encourage you to to look up legends ultimate arcade uh, it's a system that's that's um, uh, brought out by At Games is the name of the company. Um, so it's a it's an at home arcade system, and um, I am absolutely in love with this machine. Um, it's it's been very difficult to get your hands on because um, it's very high demand, uh, low volume. Uh, Six hundred dollars. I finally, I am happy to report that I finally was able to order one yesterday, and it's going to be at my house this coming Wednesday, and I cannot freaking wait. Uh, one of the things that that separates this thing from, like, uh, for example, like the Arcade One Up that you'll find in Walmart and in um, uh, GameStop and stuff like that, mm -hmm. um, the, the Arcade One Ups, as cool as they are. Um, one thing they're like half the size of a normal arcade machine, which kind of sucks. And two, they, they're very limited unless you hack it with like a raspberry Pi or something like that. You're stuck with the two or three games that are on it and that's it. Right. This machine is not only a, a full size machine. Um, it comes with 350 built in games. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, probably only five games that you would even bother playing. I don't know. It's good. Filler. Asteroids, Burger Time, Fix It Felix, Tron, yeah, okay. Tetris, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the, so the ones that are advertised on the packaging are the ones that you'll play. The other 300 and right. 38 games or whatever, like you're like it's got tic tac toe. Like you're not gonna play it. I I might. Is it one player? I might play that. <laughs> okay, so maybe, maybe, right? Like uh, be my own little war things, games trial. One of the things that makes this system just head and shoulders above anything else out there mm -hmm. is that it's got built-in capability to add your own games to it. Your own ROMs or your own yes. purchases? Both. Oh. So you so it's got so it's got internet capability, which is it's the first arcade machine that has internet connectivity, uh, so that firmware pushes. Uh, uh, you know, bug fixes, things like mm -hmm. that, um, are, are regularly pushed to this machine. Um, and every time that they push a firmware upgrade, it actually adds functionality to the machine. So the one thing that was just recently added to the machine is light gun capability. Nice. So all of your, all of your old favorites like duck hunt or, Time Cop or um, Terminator 2, uh, any of those things, you can now use a light gun and play those games. Um, but yeah, so like all you need to add games to this thing, well, there's a, there's a, pro if you don't know how ROMs work and you've never messed with MAME, any of that, there's yeah. a slight learning curve. But if you already know how all that works, uh, just throw your, your use files, uh, which is basically the package that you build from, from a ROM, just throw your use files onto a USB stick, plug it into the machine and you're ready to go. Like it's already like you just click on those games and play them. Hmm. And Oh my God, I cannot wait for this thing to arrive. I've already got a place all set aside for it. It's ready to go. It only I, takes about I, 10 minutes to put this, this thing together. Are you so putting 15 it... minutes after I open it, I'm going to be playing <laughs> probably Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Are, are you putting it in the spot in the bar that you were, you and I were talking about the other day? That yes. 
Yep. 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 Um, man, I, I am so excited about this. I've wanted a, an at home arcade for pretty much as long as I can remember it, over the I, last, like, I remember you spazzing out when you saw Brian's arcade. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Like you were like, Oh uh, fuck. No, I have to have one of these. Yeah. That's <laughs> man. Yeah. Over the last couple of years is becoming a, almost an obsession with me. But every, every time Sergeant Muffin releases pictures of his pinball arcade, it, I can, I can, I, every time I see it, I'm just like, Oh, Kent's going to fucking spaz about that. You're damn right. Dude. <laughs> I, like I'm so jealous of everybody that has an arcade system in their home. And, um, it, like finally, finally I'm going to have one. Uh, but like, like most things, I, I meticulously research things because mm. I, I hate, I hate regretting a purchase. Uh, what, what, what do you call that? Uh, buyer's remorse. Uh, buyer's remorse. Yeah. I, I fucking hate buyer's remorse. I've had it too many times in my life. So I try to, to meticulously research, uh, what I, what I buy. And I, for the longest time I thought I was going to, uh, basically just build my own, just like right. no kidding, build out of wood, build a cabinet and then, you know, purchase my own flat screen and then probably using like a raspberry Pi set up, yeah. um, or an Arduino. No, probably not. Arduino. No, 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 no. Arduino is too weak. Um, but a Raspberry Pi, most likely. Yeah, and, Raspberry Pi 4 home, is pretty awesome. Homebrew it. Yeah. So uh, homebrew was on the table, but it's – this is better. <laughs> this is better because I'm probably going to spend um, almost as much if I homebrewed it, and it would be an inferior product to what this thing is. And, uh, man, I cannot wait for – uh, just to to have this and play it and 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 tell people about how awesome it is. That's awesome. <laughs> Please don't disappoint me. Uh, Legends <laughs> Ultimate, man, this thing is great. Uh, there will be a link in the show notes to the to the official page for it. Um, mm-hmm. But check out right now. Walmart has them in stock. So and Sam's Club. Sometimes, yeah. Well, right, right, right. I just checked in as of right now. They have them in stock. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so I did put a, a link in the chat uh, if you wanted to reserve one directly from at games, but it also kind of it gives you pictures and, and gives you kind of a breakdown of the product. So, so um, yeah, check that out, man. Oh man. I, I drool every time I look at this thing. Yeah. Um, I I gotta say that your next link on here is one of my favorite things ever, and that is Steam. You can you can get so many awesome games on Steam. So amazing, Factorio. I've been, I've played the shit out of Factorio for about two weeks a little while ago. Yeah. Um, so Steam is doing something really great. So Steam always has sales going on, like mm-hmm. always, right? So the best way to to shop on Steam is throw a bunch of shit into your wish list, yep. things that you might like, and then you'll get an email saying like. Hey, come check it out. This this game is seventy percent off or whatever. Um, <laughs> and you'll you'll get it. It'd be like five percent off. You're like, oh, I'm still not getting it. And you start getting tired of those, and then all of a sudden there'd be one that's like ninety percent off, and you missed it because you just didn't want to check the email. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but right now is a really really great time to get in there because they are giving away games. Uh, th- there's free games. There's um, highly highly discounted games right now. Um, uh, city skylines I saw was like 80 or 90% off right now. Mm-hmm. Like, are you kidding me? If you've ever even thought about playing that game, dish out the five bucks for it right now. Like yep. it's so cheap. Um, I got, um, Tomb Raider and, uh, one of the, the, the later Lara Croft titles for 100% off. It was free. Uh, that was like three or four days ago. Uh, I think it was a one day sale. Uh, but there's man, there's all kinds of stuff going on in there, uh, which is great because you know the reason that that they're discounting so heavily right now is because so many people are at home and looking for for things to do. Um, yep. But another reason that I think the timing of this is perfect is you are organizing an event that's coming up this weekend. Yep, Saturday. What what what's going on on Saturday? Well, we've been doing this streamathon thing for every New Year's Eve for the last several years, and I wanted to do something a little more often than that. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to play first time games. That means the player will have never played the game in its current form. So um, we will start by logging into Steam and showing that we have zero hours played on that game, and then we will start to play it, and we will kind of ex- explain our experience 
as a first time player of that game, I have not picked my game yet. I think I'll probably pick it randomly the morning of uh, amongst my Steam library, which is rather voluptuous. Immense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Voluptuous. Yeah. Uh, well, because I, I also subscribe to Humble Bundle, so I'm constantly just getting, I get like 10 games a month for my $12 membership fee, mm-hmm. you know? So just, they just met, they just, they're just there. I might as well keep them. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's what we'll be doing this, this weekend on Saturday. We'll be raising money, of course, for Extra Life, uh, help, uh, you know, th- in this time where people are, una- are afraid to go out and, you know, we shouldn't be going out. We shouldn't be visiting hospitals unnecessarily. There's a lot of kids out there that are still sick, still being treated for cancer, things like that. So now's a good time to, uh, raise a little money for them and see if we can raise a couple hundred bucks and, uh, maybe help out some kids that, uh, that just need something. Yeah, man, so. uh, that is that is freaking awesome. What, what time does that kick off? On uh, I think it's nine a.m. Alaskan, which would be like one o'clock p.m. Eastern time. So, but the the details still being fleshed out, but they should be on uh, DC Streamathon on Twitch. So, so if um, let, let's say I'm I'm super interested in this, I'm like, man, I've got some games on Steam. Uh, like I just I just got one for free during this sale this week and uh, it's freaking awesome and I want to do this man I want to raise money for the kids but like I've never I've never streamed before I don't know I'm not I'm not sure if I if I will even know how to do it well um, is there is there something out there that that maybe there there, there is a an, an hour long show that you could listen to with some of your favorite Diamond Club and Frog Pants people. Um, it's a DTNS special that I was on this week where myself, Allison Sheridan, uh, Scott Johnson, uh, Justin Robert Young, Tom Merritt, Sarah Lane, Roger Chang. Um, who else was on there? Jeez. So many people. Shannon Morris was on there. Yeah. Uh, we all explained how we stream and some of the ins and outs of our streaming setups and some of the pitfalls to look out for and things like that. And you can find that at Daily Tech News Show. Um, slash 2020 slash 03 slash 25 slash DTNS special. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll have a link in the show notes, but yeah, you can find it there yep. and uh, they can we, just listen to that. And then of course, all of us, um, especially me, if you, if you need help with your streaming setup, if you're, especially if you're on PC and not on Mac, um, because that's the, the system I'm most familiar with since that's what I use right now. Uh, feel free to reach out uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. Yeah, and everybody that's in that video gave their contact information, and they're more than willing to mm-hmm. to help out. So there's email and we've actually addresses. Had, there's we've actually Twitter. had a couple of conversations via Twitter with mul- multiples of us trying to help people out already. So yeah, that's that is fantastic. Uh, learn from the best, um, Amos. You are uh, you are fantastic at this whole streaming game, and uh, the the company that you keep these days is is some of the best that there is like the likes of Tom Merritt that I will agree to. Yes. Um, uh, speaking so, yeah. of which, uh, Allison Sheridan and, and I are going to do a, uh, chit chat across the pond, uh, for her pod, uh, pod feet. And, mm-hmm. uh, that's going to be coming sometime in April, I think, but we're going to talk about the different streaming set of virtual, i.e. software mixers versus hardware mixers. That, that is freaking awesome isn't it though like how did how do we get here how, how did this happen <laughs> i know um but yeah so so check out the stream <clears throat> on uh this this saturday the um was it the 28th yeah the 28th sure. of march so if you're, if you're listening this it. after the fact um sorry you missed it but there will be more of these things um but yeah so yep. check it out help us raise money for the kids for extra life i can't guarantee it'd be a good time but it should at least be entertaining <laughs> which is more than some people have right now. If you, yeah. If, if you, if you've watched all of Netflix, give us a shot. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely gonna be a good time. There's gonna be some, some personalities from chat that, that, you know, and yep. um, it's gonna and be a good time. I, I'm, sure. I'm super excited because myself and a few of the other people that will be streaming, we don't really have filters. So if we, do end up picking a game that's just junk or we pick up a game that's awesome. We just suck at it. It's going to, uh, 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 comments will ensue. (laughs) I have no doubt. (laughs) I have no doubt. 
I might tune in just to see what expletives I might learn. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be fun. That's so, great. All um, right. So the no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say I think the only thing left we have on the on the schedule uh, is is right where you've got it marked right now. Some changes coming to RMP to the Ritual Misery podcast, Ritual Misery in general, and this show specifically. Um, essentially, while uh, while we love this show, and don't worry, it's not ending. <laughs> <laughs> not going um, away. Let's uh, just get that out of the way yeah, right now. Yeah. RMP lives on. <laughs> We're, uh, well, so I'm just going to break it down real easy. Life events happen and things are taking my attention and my, um, my pursuit away from ritual misery. So I am going to be taking a step back. I'll not be leaving the show, uh, but I will be taking a step back and I will not be on here as regularly as I have been for the last 244 episodes to 45 now. Um, Kent is going to take the reins and it'll be a kind of a mixture. I believe you'll be doing some ritual misery episodes with some co-hosts and then, uh, I'll be coming in, uh, probably at least once a month to jump in and, uh, keep the flow going. Um, but I do have some, uh, basically it comes like this. I have a new business. I'm stepping that down because I have something else that's taking priority and that is my family and I need to take care of my family and the regular schedule of the show is irregular as y'all think it is. It's a regular uh, inconvenience to th- my family. And my family here at the house, my wife, my children will always be my top priority. So I need to step away from ritual misery a little bit, at least until the summer is over with all the big changes we have going on in our family in order to facilitate that and uh, to, to limit the distraction and uh, some of the conflicts and scheduling and things like that that are occurring. So instead of leaving completely, um, I'm going, I'm basically scaling back on everything I do online for the summer. Hopefully I'm hoping that with this Corona thing and everything else, uh, when we fly out to Cincinnati in September, fingers crossed for the beer fest with, uh, have a drink folks that that will also welcome in my full-time return to the online life and have more time and more availability for not only this show, but for my business that I started and some of the other clients and some of the other side projects that I'd like to pursue. Well put, man. Um, so like you said, I am, I'm pretty much taking over the reins of ritual misery podcast and that's going to, that's going to, uh, come in a a couple of different forms. Yep. So, Probably roughly half of the shows that I do are going to be what you would expect, a standard episode of Ritual Misery podcast minus Amos, uh, but instead have on a guest host. Um, We used to have on guests like literally every single week. So we've got a quite... We we had a 54-week run where we missed three episodes with guests. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, so we've got quite the Rolodex of of guests that we can invite back, or I, I guess I, not we, um, that I can invite back. Uh, we've got um, a lot of people that have already said that they are on board and would definitely like to co-host with me. Um, if you, the listener, would like to co-host with me, hit me up, man. Uh, RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter, or you can just hit up the show, Ritual Misery on Twitter, mm-hmm. or email the show, uh, uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com, and um, just you know, just say, hey, uh, I, I want to I wanna be on an episode, and we can totally do that. Um, I will create a quiz custom to you, the co-host, <laughs> like I do for Amos every week. <laughs> Um, and then we'll talk about uh, geeky topics that are interesting to you. So hit me up yep. if you want to do that. Um, now, so that's half of what I'm going to do. Uh, the other half is what I am dubbing RMP Extra, which are going to be experimental shows, uh, some new projects that that I've got in the works in various stages of development. Uh, for example, I talked a little bit about Dungeons and Dragons on this episode. There is a Dungeons and Dragons related podcast that I'm developing with one of my sons uh, that uh, might make itself 
known very soon. It's uh, so, it's not a watch us play Dungeons and Dragons or an explainer for Dungeons and Dragons. It's uh, it's, it's, it's a it's unique a, yeah it's a different it's a, it's a different take on the entire podcast about D and D thing. Yeah, it's totally yeah. different. So. Um, but yeah, it's it's gonna probably, be really cool. I'm looking it's forward to that. Probably one of Kent's best ideas. Um, <laughs> maybe ever. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Yeah, this is my magnum <laughs> opus. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Wait, wait, wait. You're only 42. So what the hell are you gonna do with the other half of your life? I don't know. God, I'm, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna drink myself to death in the next three years. So you mean three weeks <laughs> with the Corona? But whatever. <laughs> they will. <laughs> Yeah, that is true. Um, By the way, I did but, buy some Corona beer and a. I didn't get a lime shaker. I got a lemon lime shaker, and I'm assuming it's going to be ah, roughly the same. So, oh, that's I haven't even seen those. That's yeah. that's fantastic. Well, they didn't have lime shakers, so I got the lemon lime shaker. Shaker, and I just stocked the stock the beer fridge, so those would be nice and cold for me when I'm putting together this Gloomhaven shit later. Oh, right on. Very cool. So, um, so yeah, so RMP is not going away. Uh, you will see some changes, and um, I'm hoping that that it's going to be a lot of fun for everybody uh, get, get more um, involvement from the audience uh, because I'm not even kidding. If you're listening to this show, I want you to be my co-host. Uh, so just get up with me and we will schedule that. And if, if you're thinking, well, Amos, why couldn't you just stay on the whole time? Which I doubt any of you are, but if, <laughs> if, if that is your thought, this is actually the compromise. The original thing I, I had a contract I was going to be picking up, uh, that kind of got changed and maybe even canceled because of the COVID thing. But I had a contract where that was going to keep me away from ritual misery until September. Um, so when that kind of went south, uh, my family and I, and then Kent and I kind of sat, d- sat down and said, Hey, where can we meet in the middle on this where I'll have time, more time for the family, but I won't be dropping ritual misery. Um, and I can take care of other things so that once this extremely, insane summer passes maybe things can return to normal but um without 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 an ensuing divorce from either my wife or my best friend i wanted to find something in the middle there that uh and and this is the plan that we have it's liable to change but this is where we're at because well my life's a mess so i've got to i got to spend some time fix things up so yeah, right on. I, I I think um that's wonderful that you're afforded the opportunity to to do that. A lot of people it's it's uh well, I think for everybody it's a it's a challenge uh to you know quote fix your life. Um yeah. but I think um you're in a, a really great position to to be able to cut back on and scale back on a lot of things to to focus, you know, refocus on on the things that matter more in uh Yep. Uh, I think that's great. So congratulations for that opportunity. And I, I wish you nothing but the best um, in achieving all those goals. This feels like a really soft breakup. <laughs> it's like, uh, no, we're, we're not going to go out in public anymore, but we're going to still fuck, right? Yeah. We'll <laughs> yeah it's like, what, what, is, what does WWE say? Um, we wish you the best in all your future endeavors. <laughs> like That's like the um, you're fired <laughs> line, basically. <laughs> Oh, I damn just got fired from a podcast. <laughs> what, what a Thursday! What a Thursday! Ah, but you can come back on. Like, you know, I'll, I'll let you back on like once a month or something. Yeah, once they start putting out a little. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> um, so, hey, uh, also, we don't say this very often, but cruise on by slash swag There's there's some stuff there. Changes consistently. Changes every time I go to the site and decide I want something different on there. So. Right. <laughs> Yep. Um, but yeah, and uh, of course, Kent, where can people find out more about you and what you have going on? So the the aforementioned Twitter account, RM underscore Del Noche. Uh, I try to be funny on there, but uh, usually I'm just bitching about Pokemon or something. Um, I'll try to be funnier in the future. But yeah, check me out. RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter. Yeah. And you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. Yeah, you can also follow the show at Ritual Misery on Twitter, mm-hmm. or you can join the Discord, which is what I would prefer that everyone does. <laughs> Go over to bit.ly slash RMP Discord. Join the conversation. It's always lively over there. And of course, you can find these links and more ways to support the show at ritualmisery.com. We are live every ish <laughs> Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific. <laughs> every ish Thursday ish at 7 ish p.m. ish. Pacific-ish. 
DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.tv slash Ritual Misery. Thank you so, to so uh, thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music for us, for you, for everybody else. This has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya. <laughs> Last week we were so late, this or so early. This week we were so late. Just can't get it right. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> Well, we gotta we gotta maintain our status as a third rate podcast. Uh is it just third? I, I, we should be like three point five, like the good D and D.